have got pro goalie secret habit number nine. It is the penultimate pro goalie secret habit. You can go look up in the dictionary what penultimate means and I'll, uh, I'll wait here for you. I'll see you in a minute. Now you know what it means. Now you can drop it in, in sentences and people think you're so super smart. It means the second last. Uh, and the penultimate pro goalie secret habit is that they maximize their durability. They minimize their risk of long-term injury by looking after little things before they become big things. So they don't go around with a sore hip for three months and then get it looked after when it's so bad they can't play anymore. Or I'm going to back it up because they usually do until they either have a career threatening injury that opens their eyes or until they have to sit on the bench or sit in the stands or sit in the press box, I guess, and watch their goalie partner go in and start shutting down shooter after shooter, getting win after win, earning more and more of their team's confidence. Uh, and they, they risk losing their starting position and that is another big eye opener for them. So YouTubers, how do we know what is hurt and what is harm? What is just, yeah, that's that's sore and that's normal soreness. I'm a goalie after all. And what is, uh, maybe I should get this checked out. Basically, if, if you develop a pain just kind of out of nowhere, just there's like an, ins what's called an insidious onset. You didn't do anything or you can't remember doing anything. You felt it a little bit from time to time before. Uh, but now you kind of feel it a little bit all the time, not enough so that you can't play and maybe yeah, I just spend a little extra time warming it up and it's okay. That is, that is something going on and it's not to say, oh my God, you, you know, you have an injury, you have to stop right away. But that is something that you need to be like, hmm, why is that happening? That is an overuse injury and typically overuse injuries pretty much never just get better on their own. They will, um, you know, you might start compensating, subconsciously compensating in a way that, oh, well now that, that area doesn't hurt anymore because you've started using those muscles in a different way or you've started using other muscles to compensate for those ones that are compromised or dysfunctional and now you're setting up a different pattern. So, you know, it might be like, oh, my hip doesn't hurt anymore. Awesome, that's gone away. And then you keep going and maybe three or six weeks down the road, oh, now, now my, uh, the back, my low back on the other side just feels kind of tight, huh? And you would never make the connection. Oh, I bet you, I bet you I'm compensating and now I've compromised another area of my body because I'm trying to protect my hip or whatever it is. So those are things you have to take seriously. I'm getting excited and I'm getting a little heated up here, so. Uh, so those are things you have to take seriously and those are things that once pros get it those are the kinds of things they get looked after when they're small before they get big now if you go out and you go to do a split save and you feel a tear and a pop in your groin and instant pain yeah you you've strained uh, you've sp sp strained a muscle God <laughs> you strain muscles you sprain ligaments okay <laughs> <laughs> and half the time I say it backwards. So uh, yeah, that's what it is. So let's talk a little more about the insidious onset and what is what is hurt and what is harm. Um, you know, maybe when you get out of bed, every single day you get out of bed and your hips feel a little bit tight. Once you get up and moving around, you don't have to do any special stretching. Uh, that goes away. You're good to go. Um, you know, you don't you don't feel it again. To me, that, that's normal. Um, if that starts to change, you know, well, it used to be just when I get out of bed. Now it's every time I get out of a chair. Now I feel it when I'm on the ice as well. That's progressing. When we talk about um, FAI or femoral ac acetabular hip impingement, if you remind me, I'll try to remember it. If you remind me, I'll put a link in the description to a, a really comprehensive report and guide I did on hip impingement in goalies. It has some great resources for you. but. When we talk about that, one of the hallmark signs of, of hip impingement, once it's getting to the point where something is going to have to be done about it, is uh, that you're, you're getting a decrease in range of motion, in hip internal range of motion. Um, and so it's like, hey, I used to have a wide butterfly flare and now 
you know, now I don't. Plus, maybe you're getting some more hip pain. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But that loss of range of motion is sort of a hallmark sign. So that's a time to get it looked at. Okay, so something's going on. Who should look at that? Uh, a lot of you go to your doctor. If you think of all the stuff your doctor has to learn in their relatively short time in medical school, they actually don't have time to deep dive into musculoskeletal assessment. Now, some primary care doctors do a residency in um, sport medicine or a fellowship in sport medicine, and so they'll learn some more of those skills. But the people who really have those assessment skills are your physical therapists and your chiropractors. Um, and it's like anything. There's some amazing physical therapists and some really not good ones. There are some amazing chiropractors who have a really good understanding of, you know, how the body works and how to assess the bones and the muscles and, uh, and then some that really just, well, we're going to manipulate that. And, you know, that, does that feel better? Oh, yeah, it feels better. Okay, like I'll see you next week. So you need to sort of choose your professional. For me... My first stop is always a sport physical therapist. And I think it's good too to just develop a rapport with that sport physical therapist so they know what's normal for your body. You know, they've seen you, they've assessed you, they can tell, wow, this is really tight. This isn't normally like this. So a sport physical therapist can do the assessment uh, on your bones, your muscles, your joints. And here's how you know if they're doing a good job. They're not just looking at the area of pain. So if you go and you say, I have left hip pain, they don't spend their whole assessment looking at your left hip. They're gonna look at your ankle, your knee. And some people think, why are they looking at my knee? Why are they looking at my shoulder? It's my hip that hurts. Because a lot of times the pain has nothing to do, um, you know, the cause of the pain hasn't anything to do with the source of the pain. So they need to look above and below those joints to sort of rule out something else going on. This is really true too in, um, back pain and that kind of thing. So they should be looking at different, the joints above and below your location of pain. And then they should have a treatment plan. And that treatment plan should first be, you know, if you're, if you're in real discomfort, should be getting that pain down. If you have swelling, getting that swelling down. So here's where they might use some interferential current to things like that to sort of settle it down. But then they should be moving into active treatment. Some, you know, mobility exercises, some strengthening, specific strengthening exercises. And sometimes it takes time for that to actually feel better. So some people will be like, oh, I went to the physio for three weeks and, and you know, I still had pain. Yeah, because it probably took you three months or three years to get into this mess. It's going to take you longer than three weeks to get out of it. But there should be a progressive approach. If you go in every week, they kind of do a little mm, and then hook you up to stim, uh, stem or give you ultrasound and hook you up to stem and send you on your way. Time to look for a new sport physical therapy. Um, I trust the sport physical therapist too. If there's an area or a, or a segment or a joint that needs a manipulation, then they can refer me to... A chiropractor um, because they have the advanced training in that some physical therapists can do manipulations as well uh, it's it's an additional training on top of their physical therapy degree but that's that's when I would personally go to a chiropractor I think massage therapy is a really good adjunct treatment to help get rid of some of the um, spasm uh, and to do some good connective tissue work. But in terms of treating the cause, uh, I think sometimes they just don't have the tools to know how to diagnose and treat the cause. But I think it's a good adjunct therapy. I think it's a good sort of ongoing maintenance therapy, again, so that your massage therapist really gets to know your body and how it works and what is normal for your body. The medical doctor, um, some of you need to see a medical doctor to get a referral to physical therapy, so that that's important. A lot a lot of times when you go to the medical doctor they will tell you um, okay take a couple weeks off they might give you a subscription to anti-inflammatories and really if the things we do on the ice as a goalie are what irritates our hip and we're not doing those things for two weeks plus we're taking an anti-inflammatory for two weeks it's going to feel better 
until we stopped taking the anti-inflammatory and then started doing the stuff that hurt. And now we're two weeks or three weeks down the road and, and we're no further ahead than we were. So we go back to the doctor. Uh, so if, yeah, if you have to get the prescription to go to physical therapy, then that's great. Again, I like the backwards method where I trust the physical therapist. If they think it's something like, maybe you thought you tweaked your knee, they do the things that normally make this feel better and it's not getting better. So they're thinking this might be a meniscal tear, uh, and it's not getting better. Then they would refer us to the doctor, uh, who would then assess it or even refer us to an orthopedic surgeon. I know in Canada, it's super hard to see an orthopedic surgeon in the States. It's like, yeah, I tweaked my knee. I'm seeing the surgeon tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, what, how is this possible? The problem with that is, uh, and one of my mentors is an orthopedic surgeon and the work they do is amazing, but their job is to do surgery. So it's like, if you come to me and want to be a better goalie, I'm going to give you exercises because I'm a strength coach. If you go to a surgeon with a sore knee and it looks like it's a meniscus, they're probably going to want to do surgery to go in and see if it's a meniscus and to clean up whatever's in there. Uh, so sometimes that will be jumping the gun. Sometimes it's like, hey, if we just gave it a really good course of physical therapy, maybe three months or six months, um, this can get better and we don't need surgery right now. Even with uh, femoral acetabular hip impingement, they might say, yeah, yeah, we can go in and we can reshape the head of your femur. But maybe if you do the right course of physical therapy, you're not that far along and we can buy you another, you know, season or six months or whatever it is before you would need that surgery and, and just get to a better time for you. So that's sort of how to know what's hurting harm, who to go see. So I want you to take two things out of this video. The number one thing is proper training is your best form of prehab. It's the best way to improve your dur durability and reduce your risk of both overuse and acute injuries. Even if you're doing all the exact right training, you still have a risk of getting an acute injury because sometimes things just happen so fast out on the ice, but it's gonna minimize your risk. The second thing is, if you have an injury, no matter how big or how small, so one of my mentors, Coach Mike Boyle, he says the answer you know, the question, does it hurt, is a yes or no answer. So if I ask you, well, does it hurt? And you qualify that in any way. Well, once I get warmed up, it goes away. Um, if I really stretch it out, it feels better. If I do it this way, <laughs> then it doesn't hurt. You know, that is a yes. If it's a yes, um, then you go and get it checked out. And I'm not telling you to run to the physical therapist for every single little thing. If I just did a huge leg workout yesterday, it's unaccustomed to me, um, you know, and my muscles are so sore I can hardly move. I don't need to go to the physical therapist or the doctor or the chiropractor to get that looked after. But if there's something that, hey, there's either I've done something and I feel, oh gosh, you know, I just strain something, um, then I'll talk about that in a second. Or if it's something that just comes on sort of out of the blue and it doesn't even seem that bad, but it's also not going away, it's not getting better, then it's time to get it checked out. If you do something like right away on the ice, and I'll spend most of my time talking about that. So you make a movement, you feel something, you feel in your knee, um, you know, or you feel it in your groin. So when you when you tear a muscle, that's a strain. When you tear a ligament, that's a sprain. So you automatically feel something. Um, a lot of you want to stretch it <laughs> uh, for some reason. That's not always the right thing to do. So first thing to do is stop doing what you're doing. So if, if you feel that, unless, yeah, you're playing in the Stanley Cup or whatever, and you know, there's no other goalie, then you've got to stay in. But if you're just playing your regular a practice or whatever, get out of that right away. Um, because the best way to recover quickly is to minimize the injury in the first place. Once you have pain, once you have swelling in a joint or near a joint, you've sort of thrown off the, the, the proprioception, the, the body's positional awareness. So you've actually increased your risk of, of getting an injury to a different area or making the injury that you just got worse. So get out of the game or the practice. Um, there is some 
uh, research looking at how ice maybe isn't as beneficial as we thought for acute injuries. I'm not up to date on that. I'll admit I'm not up to date on the actual research. I'm not talking about stuff people like posted on the interwebs, but the actual research. I'm not up to date on that. So again, if it was me, I would still be putting ice on it. Um, and I would ice it for about 10 minutes on, let it go until the skin is warm to the touch again. And then I would ice it again for 10 minutes and pretty aggressively for the first 24 hours. I would do gentle stretching if I could and if it didn't increase my discomfort. Just gentle range of motion, I should say, not really stretching. I would take note, can I walk without a limp? Look over the first two or three days is there bruising and a lot of times the bruising will be distal to where the injury happens so maybe i tore my groin and i feel it up here and then i look and there's a bruise like just above my knee and, and you might think like oh my god i did something to my knee too but it's just gravity so it's like th that there's been disruption in the tissue there's been bleeding inside the muscle that blood is flo floated down your leg from the force of gravity and then it sort of is like it's basically decaying and it turns all those different colors. So look for that. If you're seeing that bruising, you know that's at least a grade two uh, strain there. You could wrap it with a tensor and that sometimes will just help support it, help it feel a little bit better, give it some compression so the swelling isn't getting out of control. If there's an over-the-counter anti-inflammatory that you use that you know is safe and effective for you, that would be a good time to use that as well. Okay, let's say three days has gone by. I still can't walk without limping. I did have bruising down my leg after a few days it appeared. Um, I can't really get much stretching or like range of motion and it's still really painful, I'd be booking an appointment to go get that assessed and looked after. Um, let's say it's feeling some better or you do go to physical therapy and you go through the course and it's getting better and better and they've given you some exercises and some physical therapists too don't really know okay like your pain's better, your range of motion is good, uh, you're, you, you're good, you're done. You want to make sure because what you do in physical therapy is really different from what you're going to do on the ice. So then at home, you're going to test that area in a controlled manner. So, um, you know, you might just do some, you know, some frontal plane sort of movement side to side. We're, we're just saying it's a groin for here. So, you know, how does this feel? Does that feel okay? Maybe we'll even do some, you know, recovery back down, recovery, but just in a nice steady pace, walking through some of your movement patterns, and then you'll end it there. You're not trying to find the point where, oh yeah, that really hurts. You're trying to stop before that point. So you'll do those movements, shut her down for the day. The next morning, how does it feel? Um, actually feels fine, feels the same way it normally does every morning. Maybe a little bit stiff, but once I get moving, it's good no no negative effects or you might get up and be like oh it's pretty stiff this morning but once i got up moving around they had my shower it felt a lot better i see those two as sort of okay those are green lights you're gonna slowly tr tread forward if it's like oh it was yeah it was sore and it was stayed pretty sore all day long more sore than normal that's that's a red light. Then we're gonna take a little rest until we get recovered again. Uh, from there it would be more aggressive drills. So, you know, you start with just kind of the walking through pattern. Now you're gonna get a little bit more aggressive, a little quicker patterns. Still not as fast as you would normally be, but more more um, dynamic. Up, up, down, down. Coming through. Maybe doing some little RVH post leans and see how that feels same thing how does it feel tomorrow does it feel no difference from what it was the day before does it feel a little more stiff but that goes away or does it feel a lot more stiff and then i need to tap the brakes once i'm trying some pretty good stuff off the ice it's feeling good and if you have a great physical therapist they'll take you through it it'll feel like a great workout but once that's feeling good then it's time to get back on the ice so it'll be skating without your pads on and just skating you know, just go out for a little skate, no T pushes, no C cuts, just a little skate. Because there's a lot of stability required when you're on the ice and you don't, you don't even notice it because you've been skating so long. It's not like 
you're aware like, oh, this is really slippery, you know. So that's your first day. How does it feel the next day? No different, a little stiff, but it gets better. Or, oh yeah, that's, it's pretty sore today. So red light, yellow light, <laughs> or like green light, yellow light, red light. Then you would go out with your pads on and you would just do a little bit of skating. Um, just again, with your pads on, not going down, not going up, just skate around with your pads on. You could do some stick handling, that kind of thing. Then, am I a green light, yellow light, red light? Then you would go out and you would do some gentle T pushes, some gentle C cuts. Um, then you would get into your butterfly and do some gentle pushes from your butterfly. Not high speed drills, but just taking it nice and gentle. Feels green light, yellow light, red light. Next thing would be get on the ice, start taking some shots, a little bit of unpredictability on the ice, but not like game speed or practice speed, but just adding that in. Green light, yellow light, red light. If that's good, then you're looking at heading back to practice, maybe with some controlled elements, then practice with uncontrolled elements, and then back into a game. So it's a long recovery. It feels like a long recovery. It sounds like a long recovery process. And for some of you, you'd be like, well, I can't get on the ice every day and do these things. So then you're going to pick, okay, well, so I can spend a little more time off the ice working through some of my movement patterns, even put on my pads off the ice and work on a little bit of movement patterns. Just do whatever I can to try to get my brain and my body in tune with what I need to do on the ice. So that is how pro goalies keep little things from becoming big things. They don't see it as a badge of honor to like, I'm not, I, my hips kill, but I just keep training and keep working hard. You know, it's like, well, you know, you, you can do the right things to make your hips feel better so that you're not having pain so that you can play better so that you can stop more pucks and be a better goalie for your team. So I don't really see where the badge of honor for playing hurt comes in. I know some of you worry, well, I can't take the time off because then this guy's going to get the starts and he's pretty good and I can't afford to miss the starts. And But it's going to come back to bite you in the ass <laughs> at some point and bite you harder than it is right now. So if you ignore it and let it go, then you're going to be in big trouble. What's a little thing right now that you might have to miss two games for, if you let it go, you might have to miss two weeks or two months down the road. So be responsible, be a professional about it. Look after your body. Uh, and yeah, I feel like I just gave a really big, like you do this kind of lecture, <laughs> uh, but it is, it, and it is a secret and it is a habit and it is something you need to take um, seriously. So on that note, this is Maria from goalietrainingpro.com. That was your uh, secret habit number nine. I will be back tomorrow. Secret habit number 10 uh, is going to talk about having a plan, knowing where you're going. We're going to talk about, hey, what exactly should you be working on right now? We've been plunged into our off season. Do we start training like it's July or is there something else I should be working on right now? That's what I've got for you tomorrow. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell. Don't forget to brush your teeth and don't forget to wash your hands.